December 16th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Proverbs chapters 15 and 16 from the Old Testament. A gentle response turns away anger, but a harsh word stirs up wrath. The tongue of the wise treats knowledge correctly, but the mouth of the fool spouts out folly. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on those who are evil and those who are good. Speech that heals is like a life-giving tree, but a perverse tongue breaks the spirit. A fool rejects his father's discipline, but whoever heeds reproof shows good sense. In the house of the righteous is abundant wealth, but the income of the wicked brings trouble. The lips of the wise spread knowledge, but not so the heart of fools. The Lord abhors the sacrifices of the wicked, but the prayer of the upright pleases him. The Lord abhors the way of the wicked, but he loves those who pursue righteousness. Severe discipline is for the one who abandons the way. The one who hates reproof will die. Death and destruction are before the Lord, how much more the hearts of humans. The scorner does not love one who corrects him. He will not go to the wise. A joyful heart makes a face cheerful, but by a painful heart the spirit is broken. The discerning heart seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on folly. All the days of the afflicted are bad, but one with a cheerful heart has a continual feast. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great wealth and turmoil with it. Better a meal of vegetables where there is love than a fattened ox where there is hatred. A quick-tempered person stirs up dissension, but one who is slow to anger calms a quarrel. The way of the sluggard is like a hedge of thorns, but the path of the upright is like a highway. A wise child brings joy to his father, but a foolish person despises his mother. Folly is a joy to one who lacks sense, but one who has understanding follows an upright course. Plans fail when there is no counsel, but with abundant advisors they are established. A person has joy in giving an appropriate answer and a word at the right time. How good it is. The path of life is upward for the wise person to keep him from going downward to Sheol. The Lord tears down the house of the proud, but he maintains the boundaries of the widow. The Lord abhors the plans of the wicked, but pleasant words are pure. The one who is greedy for gain troubles his household, but whoever hates bribes will live. The heart of the righteous considers how to answer but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. A bright look brings joy to the heart, and good news gives health to the body. The person who hears the reproof that leads to life is at home among the wise. The one who refuses correction despises himself, but whoever hears reproof acquires understanding. The fear of the Lord provides wise instruction, and before honor comes humility. The intentions of the heart belong to a man, but the answer of the tongue comes from the Lord. All a person's ways seem right in his own opinion, but the Lord evaluates the motives. Commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. The Lord works everything for its own ends, even the wicked for the day of disaster. The Lord abhors every arrogant person, rest assured that they will not go unpunished. Through loyal love and truth, iniquity is a peace. Through fearing the Lord, one avoids evil. When a person's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he even reconciles his enemies to himself. Better to have little with righteousness than to have abundant income without justice. A person plans his course, but the Lord directs his steps. The divine verdict is in the words of the king. His pronouncements must not act treacherously against justice. Honest scales and balances are from the Lord. All the weights in the bag are his handiwork. Doing wickedness is an abomination to kings, because a throne is established in righteousness. The delight of kings is righteous counsel, and they love the one who speaks uprightly. A king's wrath is like a messenger of death but a wise person appeases it. In the light of the king's face there is life, and his favor is like the clouds of the spring rain. How much better it is to acquire wisdom than gold. To acquire understanding is more desirable than silver. 
The highway of the upright is to turn away from evil. The one who guards his way safeguards his life. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. It is better to be lowly in spirit with the afflicted than to share the spoils with the proud. The one who deals wisely in a matter will find success and blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. The one who is wise in heart is called discerning and kind speech increases persuasiveness. Insight is like a life-giving fountain to the one who possesses it, but folly leads to the discipline of fools. A wise person's heart makes his speech wise, and it adds persuasiveness to his words. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. There is a way that seems right to a person, but its end is a way that leads to death. A laborer's appetite works on his behalf, for his hunger urges him to work. A wicked scoundrel digs up evil, and his slander is like a scorching fire. A perverse person spreads dissension, and a gossip separates the closest friends. A violent person entices his neighbor and leads him down a path that is terrible. The one who winks his eyes devises perverse things, and the one who compresses his lips brings about evil. Gray hair is like a crown of glory. It is attained in the path of righteousness. Better to be slow to anger than to be a mighty warrior. And one who controls his temper is better than one who captures a city. The dice are thrown into the lap, but their every decision is from the Lord. God, thank you for the trip you allowed me to recently take to New York. I always love going to New York. I kind of wish that you would let me move there, but I know (laughs) right now that's not a possibility. Uh, But I love New York because every time you uh, allow me to go there and visit, I get to have these amazing conversations about you with with people that um, sometimes I get to see again and sometimes I don't. But you always open up amazing doors for me uh, to have those conversations about you with people in New York. I truly love New York. I love all the things you can do in New York. I love the people in New York. I love how the city is set up. Uh, It's, to me, just an incredible place of peace and hyperactivity all smushed together. But one of the things that I really, truly noticed, uh, probably even more so on this trip than any other given time, is I really, truly love New Yorkers. Now, I'm kind of being... In generalities, right? Because people are like, oh, New Yorkers are rude. Well, you can find rude people any place. That's not just New York. But I think how they get that that personality trait assigned to them is New Yorkers don't pussyfoot around things. Uh, they don't take forever to get to the point. Uh, they don't spend a lot of time being politically correct. They are just always intentional about what they say. And if you're not used to that, I could see how you could take it as being rude. But I find it so incredibly refreshing every time I go. It seems that things happen quicker in New York because we don't waste all this time with fluff language trying to make sure that we don't hurt each other's feelings and worrying about the other person and all this stuff psychoness <laughs> that happens in New York is just straight to the point is that this is that okay great and, and there's a lot of um, assumptions of who people truly are you know I think we get into trouble a lot especially on the west coast because we're like oh well, what will this person think if I say this and what will they think and we need to remember what their true heart is and not try and and guess about things and pussyfoot around things In New York, they're just like, okay, you seem like a good person. I'm going to say this and I'm going to assume that you take it the way that it's supposed to be. Uh, And I I really, truly appreciate that and respect that. It was funny because I was coming back from New York uh, on the plane and I was sitting next to an incredibly passive aggressive woman uh, who amazingly in the same sentence and with some of her actions would be like the sweetest person you could possibly meet and the meanest person. And, and I'm sure the people listening to this video, God, know people like that. But those those type of word combinations just astound me, especially when I was just coming off of a week of people who were cut and dry to the point. And here I have this, 
this woman who she's very agitated that she's in the middle seat she doesn't like it so she's still trying to be nice to the people around her but she's saying just I would call it inappropriate things and she was acting out inappropriately especially <laughs> for someone who was 80 years old I really haven't seen an 80 year old throw a tantrum until this last weekend but I think about that when uh, we're reading Proverbs, Proverbs 15, 4, uh, specifically where it says speech that heals is like a life-giving tree, but a perverse tongue breaks the spirit. And if you read it in a couple uh, other versions of the Bible, other translations of the Bible, that second part actually says, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. So you can have this amazing, beautiful, gentle way of talking to people, this kindness, this sweetness. But if the underlying piece of it is you're angry, frustrated, and that kind of passive aggressiveness is, is coming out in between your words or, or perhaps in your actions, then it is not the tree of life. In fact, it's exactly opposite of that. And I remember getting off of this flight after six and a half hours and I was emotionally drained. I haven't been that emotionally drained in a long time. And then I thought of this verse. After having to deal with that woman for six and a half hours, uh, and, and even trying to work around that and trying to get her out of that passive aggressive agitation kindness cycle that she was in, I was thoroughly exhausted. Uh, my heart hurt. Not because I'd taken things personally, but just having to deal with that for six and a half hours. And, and I thought, we really don't understand just how powerful our words are to people for good or for bad. That we have words that can un uplift, encourage, motivate, excite, teach, uh, help guide all these amazing things in people's lives. And then we have that same power in us with these words to cut somebody down, to make them feel small, uh, to frustrate them, to anger them, to agitate them. We have that power within our words as well. And then when we mix them, we're trying to come across as nice, but there's this agitation, this, this anger behind our words. Uh, we would have to be fools to think that people aren't truly getting that point that you're trying to be nice, but it's really kind of a backhanded compliment or a backhanded uh, comment about you're not really happy with what's going on and you're going to let me know. So God, help me understand when I'm doing that. I try really, really hard not to be passive aggressive because it drives me crazy. It's one of my big pet peeves. And, and so if you find me doing that, I'm trying to be kind and nice, but there's this underlying agitation or anger that I haven't dealt with and that's coming out in between my kindness. God, please point that out to me prune that part of of my vine because I, I have no desire for it to be there I also have obviously no desire for hurtful words cutting words I want words that help teach and guide and love and support and show mercy and grace even when I'm having to disciple somebody and discipline them within that discipleship please allow my words to be grace filled so that they know so they can remember my true heart that it is coming from a place of love that it's not coming from a passive aggressive situation where I have an underlying um, emotion of hatred or, or anger towards them. That it truly is coming from a place of love. I know your instruction to us and your uh, discipleship and discipline with us comes from a powerful place of love. And I just ask that you please help guide our words so our words, our actions, our deeds can again reflect your glory, God. I pray I'll listen in your son's name. Amen.